sa pagpalang umaga sa bawat sa atin. Welcome once again to our morning devotions and daily meditations on the words of God. Today is November 6, 2022 and it's a Sunday. Happy Lord's Day. And before we go on to our respective places of worship, ay mahalaga na simula natin ang araw natin sa pag-aaral at pagmumuni-muni ng salita ng Diyos. So we jump in into the Gospel of Luke, part number 2, which is the book of Acts. We continue on the story of the conversion of the Apostle Paul, meeting on the Damascus Road, meeting with uh, Yeshua. And we entitled our devotion this morning as a chosen vessel and that pertains to the Apostle Paul. Upon this meeting, we continue on the story. We jump on chapter 9, verse number 8. And Saul arose from the earth, or from the land. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. So he became physically blind. And they, he was led by the hand and brought and he was brought into Damascus, into the place, into the very place that he would want to be there, would want to be, because he had a mission to bring all these disciples of Yeshua and imprison them. So he was the one imprisoned. He was physically blind, but now he is now no longer spiritually blind. We know that the that the northern part, whenever north, you know, Damascus is the northern part of Jerusalem. Whenever north is mentioned in the scriptures, it talks about those that are opposing uh, the plans and purposes of God. So he was going to Damascus, and there was much of Yeshua's followers there. And he was right there after them to imprison them. But he was arrested by Jesus Christ, the Messiah, by that uh, vision of light. He heard the voice of God. And he was physically blinded, but now spiritually he can see. Verse number 9 of Acts chapter 9. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. So he became physically blind because of that encounter he needs to. And after that, he prayed and fast. He neither did eat nor drink. So he prayed and fast because of this uh, marvelous event in the life of the Apostle Paul. Verse number 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus. So uh, probably the Apostle Paul was after them. Uh, he was really going after them, maybe because of the persecution in Jerusalem. Most of the disciples of Yeshua went far north, and we find them there are in Damascus. We find a disciple which named Ananias. The meaning of the name Ananias is the cloud of the Lord. So, very interesting. Ananias, a disciple, uh, a cloud. His name means the cloud of the Lord. Just as uh, in the Old Testament in the tabernacle after the offering of the Day of Atonement offerings, the cloud of the Lord would appear, in which we call the Shekinah glory. So in here, the Apostle Paul would be meeting the cloud of the Lord, which named Ananias, the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Notice here the, the conversation there with Ananias and Jesus Christ, Lord, Yod, Hey, Bab, Hey. The name of the Lord. Uh, he knew the voice of the Lord, Ananias, and he responded uh, immediately. Verse 11, the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. So he became the Apostle Paul right there, and then he became physically blind, asking the Lord, What wilt thou have me to do? 
he was led to Damascus and he prayed and he fasted for three days. And had seen in the vision of a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. He was once a persecutor because he was physically, uh, he was spiritually blinded by his uh, own religion. But now God has freed him. He is no longer uh, spiritually blind, but physically blind. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name, including Ananias. Oh, he had, you know, Paul has done so much damage there in Jerusalem. And now he has, he has after those followers of Yeshua to Damascus. But the Lord has plans for him. Verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So the whole purposes and plan of God that, just, that Jesus Christ did not only die uh, for the sin of the nation of Israel, but rather he also died for the nations. God is the, not only the God of Israel, but he is the God of the nations. Notice here uh, the words of Jesus Christ, as the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for it is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. We all know, we would later know that the Apostle Paul, that he is an apostle to the Gentiles. Because the whole purposes of redemption and plans and purposes and salvation of God doesn't only exclusively belong to Israel, but to the nations. He wanted the nations back to the fold of Yahweh. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So there are many uh, beautiful passages, words here that we could be, we could meditate upon this morning. First that we understand that the Apostle Paul was a chosen vessel. God has a purposes and plan. And he wanted to use a he wanted to use human vessels and instruments to implement his plans and purposes in this world. And the truth the fact is all believers of the Lord Jesus Christ we were chosen as his vessel. He has his purposes and plans. And we thank God that uh, apart from all the people in this world, nations, billions of people in this world, we were we were uh, we were given a task, and we were given a, a, we were chosen by God to do a task that would further His kingdom in this world. We were a chosen vessel unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Bear in mind. And so to to bear he was chosen but to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. To bear the name means you have the presence of God. The name basically means you have the presence of God. The Apostle Paul had the presence of God in him right after this encounter. He became a Pharisee, a strict follower this time of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the meaning of the name Pharisee, a strict follower. So he became a strict follower of Jesus Christ by this time. There's only one thing in the mind of the Apostle Paul right after this conversion he is to preach and to spread the message of the good news. He was sold out. He was a chosen vessel. He knew that to bear that, that he was a chosen vessel to bear the name of Christ. He has the presence of God in him before the Gentiles, before kings, before Roman emperors, and the children of Israel. 
And another thing, verse 16, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, the theme of suffering, nowadays, uh, no one would never, no one would really wanted uh, the theme of suffering in their service anymore. But the fact is, we were a chosen vessel of God, an instrument of God to bear His name. We have the presence of God in us. And the Apostle Paul, we uh, experienced those suffering. For I will show him how great things he must suffer. He died a martyred death in the hands of Nero. Again, we are a chosen vessel. Uh, that is the one thing that we need to meditate upon. What God, we should know the will of God, the purposes of God as his chosen vessel. We need to know that and fulfill that in our lives through what through as we have seen here through prayer and fasting the apostle paul knew uh this uh these things and the things that he must needs to do in his life and if we are a chosen vessel we must be ready and prepared as he stated here in chapter 9, verse 16, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. We will suffer. Uh, the theme of suffering is no longer uh, accepted by this time by, because of the, uh, the goodness and and the prosperity of uh, the churches nowadays but the thing is just as the apostle paul were the chosen vessel of god and yet the promise is that he must suffer for the name of jesus christ he died a martyr martyr death so the theme of suffering is not something that we dread in this life or we do not like that to happen in our lives but the thing is just as our master jesus christ suffered in this world so sooner or later this world is degrading marami na kagulo nangyari sa bansa and after that sa buong mundo hindi lang sa ating bansa kundi sa buong mundo maraming kaguluhan gera but sooner or later persecution will begin and the challenge, the encouragement for us is that if you are a chosen vessel of God, you continue on to serve Him, to represent His presence amongst all those unbelievers, and there will be suffering along the way. But take heart, God is with us, and though we suffer, though it may cost us our lives but we will be in the presence of God so yun lamang po at magandang umaga sa bato sa atin magandang araw at tayo pumunta sa ating mga bahay sambahan pang tayo patuloy na mapagpala ng Diyos pang tayo lalong higit maging matatag sa ating pananampalataya maraming salamat at God bless us all